Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, Don Spector here today with an AMA review. And I'm taking a look today at the MeOS or previously known you know, Hi-Fi Man, uh, Hi-Fi Boy, <laughs> see, even I make this mistake, OSV, OSV3. And yes, this is a hybrid IEM uh, having one dynamic driver and two balanced armatures. And uh, yeah, uh, this is a follow up video for the MeOS Eagle because uh, yeah, the OS33 comes for free if you buy an Eagle, or which apparently uh, Panon has changed now. They charge now 10 additional dollars for the OSV3. And yeah, um, in this review here today, this is just a short one, I'll be discussing. Uh, everything you should know about the OSV3. And I will not spoil anything so far, but uh, let's first quickly talk just about the IEM itself. Because uh, I think this is the most positive thing that I can say about the OSV3. It's a nice semi-custom shape and it's not too big. Uh, the nozzle is a bit on the wider side, like six millimeters, but it doesn't feel as wide as it uh, yeah, actually is in real life. And there's an ever so slight pronounced nozzle here. It's like, I think one millimeter just wide and uh, doesn't really have an edge. So some tips you might have have difficulties putting it on, but most of the tips, it should be totally fine. And uh, yeah, it has a two pin connector that is relatively flush. It's not color matched. Um, and that's, I think, most positive things that I can say about the OSV3. Like, the style is just black, like, collects fingerprints. Yeah, it doesn't have driver flags. Okay, but that's good. And unfortunately, here are my positive ends. Uh, the cable, I unfortunately do not have pictures here because I sent the OSV3 and the Eagle back to Panon. Uh, because, uh, uh, yeah, reasons we talk about that later on. So, uh, yeah, just the cable itself, it feels like a cheap KC cable. It's uh, not great. It's a bit tangly. It's not smooth. It's not uh, really not, uh, yeah, like for an IEM of like maybe $20, I would say it's acceptable, but uh, I don't know what this one would cost originally. Um, but it's just maximum $20 I would pay for this IEM, just judging by the cable and the IEM build. Or like, IEM build is fine, that I don't have complaints, but by cable, really not great. And now, unfortunately, we come to the bad part. And it's not only bad, it's catastrophic. Uh, so I will not be doing a full review of the OSV3 uh, similar to Eagle just because the QC here at MeOS or Hi-Fi Boy is so bad. Um, first, let me throw on here a graphic for you that shows you this was the first model I got. See the roll off of like 10 decibel in the base from one side to the other. That already makes it unlistenable, like straight up, these are not the same I am, like you can't listen to that. And uh, unfortunately, everything after that is totally fine with a maximum channel imbalance of like three decibel at like uh, nine kilohertz or like 8.5. That would be okay, uh, not the greatest, but totally fine. And uh, yeah, just the base roll off here, you, you can't listen to anything like this. This is impossible to even use. And yeah, the first unit I got, uh, just uh, for reference here, uh, did look totally fine. It was not dirty. It just looked like yeah, any other IEM that I have gotten. But the replacement unit I have, and I kid you not, this these are the measurements. I will throw them now. This is what I got as second unit. This is not the same IEM. See that? Like, there is no similarity going on here. What the hell is going on with Meo and Slash Hi-Fi Boy? What are they doing? This is the worst channel balance that I have seen in forever. And it's not even in an area where you can say, okay, that's just a peak, like, or maybe some of the dampening for one of the BAs is not right. Or yeah, some of the wiring is not correct. Like, okay, that can happen. This is completely different with the second unit. Like, it's so different. Like. You you cannot even call this the same idea. I'm like it's both called OSV free, but it's just it, there's no similarities going on here. Besides, yeah, the general peaks at like 3k and then 4.5 to 5k and yeah, the 9k. These are it's like similar, but everything else is so different. It's just not you you can't listen to it. It's it's impossible. And uh, yeah, this then also means it, I can't review this. Like this is this like it can't be reviewed, and it's the same uh, conclusion as you will have of the Eagle. Um, the OSV3 is catastrophic. Like cannot be recommended. Um, Hi-Fi Boy slash Mayos needs to fix their QC. Otherwise, none of IEMs can ever be recommended because it's just too bad. And even for free, like literally for free, it's too expensive. 
it is not worth having. Like you can literally just dump this in your trash can and you are the, you have the same value as you would have gotten uh, if you just yeah get it like this. It's, it, it's absurdly bad. And uh, yeah, because uh, this is not bad enough, let me just show you another picture. This is the second unit that I got. You see the ear gunk in the nozzles or in the, uh, the sound tubes. What the hell? You sent me a used unit that is not even cleaned a second one? What is going on at Pannon? Like, this is not acceptable. And the weirdest thing is when I described Pannon this and I sent them the graphs and showed them this is not working. Like, this cannot work. They told me, sorry, it's not your personal preference. What the hell? Like, you see, this is a used unit. It's broken. And you tell me it's not to my personal preference. No, pennant, this is not acceptable. And again, same recommendation as with my previous video. You cannot treat customers like that. You can not. And next time somebody sends you a graph that clearly shows it's broken, accept it. Just tell them, yeah, it's broken. Like you can clearly prove it. We just take it back. And yeah, but you need to pay the shipping on your own is also not a good start because it's clearly broken. Uh, however, I want to say, and I want to also, uh, uh, yeah, not praise Pannon, but at least give them that. After I, like, after a lengthy discussion and I approved them and show, shown them the graphs again, they were like, okay, we take them back. You don't need to pay the shipping and we, uh, uh like, I had to pay the shipping, but they refunded me the shipping back. So um, here, I just want to say uh, formally also, thank you, Penan. That was nice of you. I know it's not in your uh, terms of service, but I uh, would have to pay it. But still, uh, thank you for doing that because these units, like, they cannot be listened. And uh, the only thing that they can also be doing at Penan is they throw all of these units or they start measuring them and then find the ones that are still working. Because I think this is just the return units they got before or something else. Like clearly OSV3 that comes with the Eagle, not worth it. And uh, you shouldn't get the Eagle an expectation of uh, you get a second unit that is working. Um, maybe if they fix the Eagle, they could be worth it. But OSV3, like how this is looking in both of my units, this is just, it's free, but even free is too much. And yeah, um, this is basically my review for OSV3, like, uh, yeah, cannot recommend it. It's the worst IEM that I have ever measured. And uh, even when you get it, you can get used units, which are not even cleaned. That is really, really not good. And uh, yeah, uh, that's about it. What I can say about OSV3. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, kind of sorry, I have to do a second negative review, uh, review in a row. I usually don't like to be that negative because it it's not fun for me to do so and uh, yeah but I think this needs to be out here and it needs to be taught to people that yeah this is not worth it and it's just garbage and yeah I hope you enjoyed it if you have questions uh, criticisms recommendations whatever leave a comment and with this Don Spector out <laughs>